Today, we're going to start uh, learning Daf Yomi for Masechet Erevin. So before we get started in the first Daf, we're going to have to do a little bit of background. Because when we look at the first Mishnah on Erevin, it starts off talking about Mavoy, Shigavor, Mal, Mesar, Mesrim, Ama, Ayamayim. If a Mavoy that's 20 ammo, that's 20 ammo t- tall or more, you have, to, you have to make it last. But we, we, we're starting kind of in the middle because we don't know what, really what a Mavoy is. We don't know what an Erev is. And we're already talking about fixing something technical about allowing us to carry in, in an area. So this also happened when we started, when we started the beginning of the set of Shabbos, where, where, we, started, where we started talking about um, carrying one riches to other riches without explaining that there's actually an Isser of Hotza. So before we get into the uh, before we get into learning of the, of the of the daf and of and the we're going to start with a little bit of background. So the uh, so so as far as the the mitzvot that are going to be dealt with in the mesachet erevin, so uh, so we're going to start with uh, there's actually two. One of them is 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 the mitzvah of tchumen. Another one is the is the Isser of Hotza. So there's a phrase that that that, that some people may have heard called that you don't have a Jewish community until you have a a shul, a pool, and an air. So I know, so why you need to have a um, why why you need to have a shul makes sense. Why you need to because how's you gonna have you know, your basic Jewish life and it's having a mikvah makes sense because you need that for tar to But air like where does that come in? Why do you need to have an air? So. For that, we're going to have to explain a little more about what what exactly hotza and tchumen is. So hotza, simply put, is that you're not allowed to carry from one from a private domain to public domain and vice versa. Um, and as far as the um, the insert of tchumen goes, that's that you can't walk more than two thousand amot outside of your house. And if you live in a city, um, then it would be two thousand amot outside of the out of outside of the, of the city the city limits. Um, so once and, and once we have these two serums, so there's also in Germany, there's two ways to there's a way to fix this. The air is to is to help with the issue of Hotza, and there's the air to to help with the issue of of Tcho. Um So now, but before we go into exactly how all these work, let's explain a little bit more about what from where and why there is the Isra of Hotza and the Isra of Tcho. So we're beginning with this the Isra of Hotza. So the Isra of Hotza actually um, is first is first mentioned in in is mentioned in Masechet Shabbos, um, and there the Gemara is talking about where the in general about all of the various Isurim that there that the that there were of all the various malachas you can't do on Shabbos, and it says that they're all learned Mishkan. They're all learned up based on the constructive actions that were done in the Mishkan. So the so the Sajigon and Rashi debate when it says, "Can I get over to Mishkan?" Does it refer to the 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 work that was done in the construction of the Mishkan, or does it refer to the work that was done the upkeep of the of the Mishkan? We did it on a day to day basis. So, and when the Gemara then goes as continues and talks and keeps out, gives examples of things that were done in the how they made the Mishkan, it mentions uh, when they used to transport from the the wagons. To the street and vice versa, and the cut and from one wagon to another wagon in the context of building the Mishkan. So therefore, we have the Rishut Harabim, which is the road. We have the Rishut Yachid, which is the wagon. And between the two of them, that's where we learn that you're not supposed to carry from one domain to a, from a private domain to public domain, or vice versa, on shops. So this would seem very, work very well. As so is one of the alchemalachot, and that's simply it. But the thing is, though, that's not where it ends. We also have the Gemara and Shabbos stuff, Sadiyavam Abed, which says that talking about about, about Zrika, it says that we, that actually where we learn this from. So it's actually learned from by Tzav Moshe by Virupol Machanet that Moshe gives it was, was giving a commandment, and then the sound was transferred to the um, and, and was, um, to the to the, to the encampment where Bnei Israel were, were, were sitting. So and then we have the Machal Aviyah, the Machal Yisrael, which is from one Rishut to another Rishut, um, by way of Rishut Ram in between. So that would be, that would be Israel Tzah, to write to that. And then we have a different, we have a different limur, where, um, where it says, you learn it out from Ayin Tzai Ishim Koma. So why would you need to have two limurim for Israel Tzah? 
So the re quoted by Tosvot um, says that you needed one is for the person inside and the person and the person who's outside. It's just two people carrying from Rosh Hashanah and one from Rosh Hashanah and the person receiving Rosh Hashanah. And also because Otsa is, is a Mocha Grua. And therefore, it needed to have an explicit um, Limud and source just for it. So, but what, what, what do we mean by, by the fact that Otsa is a Mocha Grua? Well, we call it Mocha, mocha Grua because you didn't really do anything. You moved an item from place A to place B, but the item is still the same as when you started. So, therefore, you know, it's a little hard to explain why, why it's Mocha, that's why it needs to be. But from Sar, you could have said, well, I mean, it makes sense why it's a, why it's a, why it's a malacha, because, you know, nowadays it's big business to, uh, to transport things from place to place. Um, so that, so, but still, like, it felt that it wasn't sufficient of a malacha, therefore it needs its own puzzle. But then how about, how about Tzuman then? Because Tzuman would be even less. It's simply, you're walking a little bit. How about going for a short, for, for a walk of a couple, of a kilometer or two, cause due to problem. So that for as, where is the source for Tzuman is? That of walking too far past where we're supposed to be. So for that, we have the Gemara in Sota where Bikiva says, "How do you learn that you can't look at that you can't walk 2,000 amot outside the city?" He says, "Let's learn based on the city limits of our Levim is 2,000 amot. Um, so 1,000 is for the Migrash, which is for the, the, the nice fields around, and 2,000 is the outer city limits, and that's how we can learn there's outer city limits for Shabbos. Also, that you can't go past 2,000. But Bikiva doesn't really give a reason. It's simply a more or less. And when we get to the Gemara and Shabbos stuff, I am a bet. Then it's the question is where exactly did we learn about Shabbos? Did we learn about Shabbos everything about Shabbos tomorrow, or did we only le- learn about everything in Shabbos except for Tchum? So why would not we learn Tchum in there? Because Tchum is actually taught explicitly in the Parsha of the Mon, as it says in the par- in, in uh, Shemot Zayin. So when Hashem gave Ben Israel the commandment to uh, to collect the man, so it initially said, "Don't take too much, don't leave it over." So they followed the first command of not taking too much, but they left, but they left over, and then God got angry for that. And then God says, when it comes time for Shabbos, He says, "So double on Friday, don't go out, uh, don't go out to collect anything on." On Shabbos, the people don't listen. I got guys saying. So the question is, so, um, so why and what and how this is that? Was this happen? So, it's, so it's, it would stand to reason that um, that really that why is it usher to why why is it usher to to go anywhere when you're on on, on shop, why can't, why can't you leave? So you simply say, because God was trying to test the Israel and he was telling them, you know, you should really shouldn't be um, going out. And um, that's why I see, are you able to follow directions or not? Because this is the first mitzvah Ben Israel got in Midbar and, you know, they seem to have failed. But there's, an, there's another option, is that maybe there's something actually more to the mitzvah, not simply that it was a test to see why we would, why we would do it. So the Parsha of the, um, so to that, so the Rambam seems to have gone along the Katuv uh, route, where he says, and as mitzv- in the midst of Lavin Shin Chafalif, that the that Lola Lecha Meshavat Chutz L'Tchum of all Lola, right? He says, what's the problem? You shouldn't go outside of the Tchum, um, but he doesn't really give much of a reason. Um, so that's that. Um, so it seems like he simply holds that it's a Derek Katuv. Other end with that Sefer Achinach. Who says why shouldn't you go? Why shouldn't you go out of the out of the tchum? So he says that just like God rested, you you should rest, right? By Therefore, in order for okay, therefore we also should rest in one place, just like God did. So should we? And we shouldn't go very far. Only you should go a short distance, such as an enjoyable a a teul that's onik that's that's an onik that's enjoyable. And once you're walking. To uh, you'd be in mill, which is the maximum distance listed for what Tchum Puidu, right? So that's definitely way too much effort. That's you know, that's rough, almost 12 kilometers. That's eight eight miles. That's too far. You can't consider that to be restful. So according to the to the Sefer Echinoth, this year of Tchum in, uh, comes out from the fact that we're all supposed to be resting in one place, and in and in order and or and 
it's supposed to be, and you have to be having owning Shabbos, and if you're simply walking too much, you can't have that. The Rav Shulchan expounds in a similar area, but he also adds that not is it only is it a question of of ter of tercha, but he also says that you want to, that if you're spending all day walking, that'll be a problem because you won't have time to sit and properly enjoy on on Shabbos and be able to learn Torah. So the Gemara, actually, the Gemara in Yerushalmi gives a uh, when they're trying to expound on how far, so there you get a little bit, a little bit of different reasoning. There they say uh, the 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 Rabbi Shayu says that that's, that um, uh, that it's unclo- that I don't know exactly how far the Tzchum is made to right. So we got Rabbi Mano says that it's two, that that two thousand is a problem, but four but four thousand he's not sure if you're in violation. Um, and then we got Rabbi Shimon who says that I don't I'm not that actually I'm pretty sure that everything's fine until you get to 12 mil. Um, and that's where the problem comes up. So the question is, so, and what does he say? Why is it 12 mil like Machan Israel? Wait, so what, what does Machan Israel have to do with the limit of 12 mil? So actually it has a lot to do with it because when we're, because when we're learning in the second child, when we're first talking about which of the Rishonim are, it talks about why the, what whether or not the desert is considered to be starved or not, it says based on his manche Israel Shri Midbar, uh, um, that's when it was considered to be a Yerushalayim, but Bizman is that it's considered to be a Rishon Tachid. So wait, so what's the difference between the two? What's the difference between the, between the two? Why does the, when the Bnei Israel were in Midbar, the Midbar make a difference? We could say that. So I would suggest that there's something unique about what the Bnei Israel experienced when they were in the Midbar, and that's why God would tell them they shouldn't be leaving when they were in the Midbar. When they were in when Bnei Israel were in the Midbar. They had the special experience of God providing for providing everything for Bnei Israel. Bnei Israel did, didn't need to search for food; it was provided them by God by the manna. That w- water flowed right 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 next right next to the right the tents, via Be'er Miriam. And as far as their um, their clothes and their and their sho- and their shoes, they never they grew with them, and, and they never went, and, they, and they never cracked or went bad. So. So when God is taking care of everything, so why is God putting all this effort? Because God wants you to experience what it is to be the Jewish people, to be the Jewish nation. And in order to do so, you can't be going around everywhere. You have to actually be staying in a place to truly enjoy the experience that is being part of the Jewish people. So we see, we see hints to this elsewhere. So in the Gemara bit, so it's talking about why it's forbidden to ride on a animal on Shabbos. So it says you should learn it out based on Tchum. So then it, um, Gzera, based, because we know that Tchum is Aser, so Gzera on top of Tchum, and now it's Aser to this as well. But Gmar then says, well, that's a problem because Tchum is Tchum in Nirvana. Um, but they know, rather than they say, it's because of maybe they'll break up a branch. But that seems a little technical, like is it is really a reason why you can't ride a horse because you might break up a branch to hit the horse and make it go faster? No, really, the Chazal wanted to ask their horse, ride, horse riding, and then they simply had to find a good reason. So the Beit Yislak actually picks up on this, and he says that why is it forbidden to, to ride on horses? Not simply because, oh, you might break up a branch. Rather, he says it's really the reason it's tied to what Tchumen is, is that Chazal basically didn't want people to be using public, to be using transportation on Shabbos. Um, so and he uses this to, to explain why you're not supposed to use a you know a trolley go on trolley car or bike on Shabbos because he said that Chazal had already answered um, riding a boat for other reasons. So and now he's now they're saying that you shouldn't be using these these ancient the, the equivalent of vehicles back. The horse was the was the car of the of two thousand years ago. So you shouldn't be using that on Shabbos from place to place. You should simply be where you are for Shabbos. And you shouldn't be going very far. So I'd like to build a little bit more on this and say that it's not only that, but it's also that once you start traveling at very, very long distances by use of a vehicle, changes the experience you have on Shabbos. So in the 20th century, there was a very big debate between the um, in North America, but as well also around the world, between um, the Orthodox and the conservative reform movements about are you allowed to drive on Shabbos to get to shore? The Orthodox said no, and the conservative and reform said yes. So leaving aside the questions of exactly why and why not, so let's talk about what happened afterwards. So well, as a result of being able to drive to shul, the conservative Jewish communities ended up spreading out farther and farther from shul because you, it used to be you had to, to 
live near the shoulder to get there on Shabbos. But once you could drive, the distance went from being, um, you know, maximally, uh, you know, a couple of miles or once, once it gets past more than an hour walk, that's too far to get to shul. And now that you have a car, you could live 40 miles away and still, and still be able to get there in a reasonable amount of time. So what ended up happening, actually, is that it ended up destroying the Jewish communities because, yes, you could make it, you could make it to shul on Shabbos by driving your car. But that's not the only part that matters about having Shabbos in a Jewish community. Part of the experience about, of being in a Jewish community is experiencing Shabbos with the community, not just shul, but everything that, that's part of it. And once you are spending time traveling and you're not actually in the tchum, in the area of Shabbos, of that community, you're missing out on something. So yes, sometimes you're, you're, you're for the tchum and you might have a smaller area. Let's say if you're camping, you might have you know just your, your campsite. But the fact of the matter is, is that you are, that when Shabbos comes, you're supposed to experience where you are. You're supposed to have the full experience of what it means to be in that place. And only by fully experiencing being in that place can you properly in, enjoy enjoy Shabbos and properly and, and properly know what it means to experience being part of the Jewish community. Okay, now just do give a quick summary. Um, so there are two Easter and they're being dealt with in Erevin. There is the Easter of Hotzah. Uh, which is from carrying from one one area to another area, from a private domain to public domain, or vice versa. And there's also, which can be remedied by an Eruv uh, Chaserot. As far as how does an Eruv Chaserot work, we will explain more about that when we get to Eruv Chaserot later in the second. And we also have um, the Isra of Tchumen, of going more than 2,000 Amo outside of where you live. So that can, so it could be, if you're in a city, that's the city limits, and you're, if you're you know, camping out, out in the lower 2000 from where you happen, happen, happen to be at that moment. And the reasons for Tzumen, we said, were either because either Gzir or in order to allow you to properly have Onik Shabbos, or to give you enough time to learn Torah. And lastly, the option is, to, is that you're, the purpose of Tzumen is to make you stay in one location to experience what Shabbos is like in that, in that location or in that community. So now we're going to head to the Gemara in um, in Erevin, and now we're and and start and start our our, our general learning. So for the dura- for the for the rest of the for the dur- duration of this year, I'm going to be using something called Perush Chai. I'll be sharing some of the photos. Um, you can be downloaded for free on Hebrew Books. So if you'd like to follow along yourself and not, ju- and not just um, with one with a screen sharing, please feel free to op- feel free to open that up on your on your own. Okay, so the so the mission begins. Mavoi shehu gavoa l'malo mesrim yimai. If you have a mavoi that's twenty amot tall, you should reduce it. So this is a little confusing. So let's read the first Rashi, and he'll he'll explain a lot. So what does this mean? Sheinuku etakor l'malo mesrim ama. So let me share, let me share with you with everybody the uh the the, the photo of the of what an, of, of of what a um classic courtyard in love way it used to look like. So again, if you can see your parish high, um, on the first drawing, number one. So you see there's houses on the side, which lead into a courtyard of, or chatzer, and then the chatzer then leads into the mavoy or an alleyway, and then, then that mavoy would then lead out to the restaurant. So what happens is, is that you'd put a a kora on the edge of the mavoy leading into the restaurant, and now it's now it's too, that's that is too tall. So if it's, if it's above 20, you should put it, instead of putting it all the way up top there, you should put it down lower um, to where it is less than 20. Um, and so, the, so, but again, why are we putting this core up in the first place? So actually, I'm sure Ashi comes and explains. The core is there, the top tail, the The purpose of the core is to allow you to carry with him. So why? It's me the right to it's the hot sour, it's the in the Shabbos. Right, so in general, we know that it's a problem to carry either four on in in a um, which is a sracha, which is a highway or a placha, which is a large a large plateau or business square, um, or other or other levels listed in where shadows above the bet. Um, and why? Because Shadow and Digley Midbar, because they are similar to the way Bene Israel uh, camped in the in the midbar. 
The whole milita shabbat mimishka. I mean, I could learn out everything from um, about about this from the from from the construction of the mishkan. Agal of shalvi barocha shishazar ama, and and when the agala were in of the levim, they're unloading and loading. So there, the pass the passageway was sixteen ama wide. Karen Bazar, as you mentioned in the in Shabbos of Zaytet, Hilkach um, Lager Tzorabim Basir Me Me Tetzayin Ama. So therefore, you can't have a Tzorabim less less than sixteen amot uh, wide. Umfulash Mishnei Rashav, and it has to be straight on both ends. Aval Mavoi Katsaru, but in general, the alleyway is too narrow. Ve'Eno Rachav Shisrei Ama, it's not sixteen amot wide. Ve'Ina Mi'Or Rachav Hu Ve'Eno Umfulash El Rosh Ha'Echad Patuach Tzorabim Rosh Ha'Echad Satu. Or that, they, or that it's a, it's a closed up alleyway, so either it's not, either it's too narrow, or it's could be wide enough, but there's something blocking the passage through on the other side. Um, because if it was actually it was actually surely mafulash and big, then they have to fix it different way, as we'll, as we'll get to in the Gemara later, later on. The cave on the law versus the Rabbim who shared the Tzolei Bay Mina Torah. Since it's technically not the Rabbim, because you can't start with mafulash, it's not wide enough. So therefore, you really directly could have carried there, but uh, without, but why, why, why can't you? So the problem is, is that an alleyway can look a lot like your like your because people are going in, they're going out, and people could confuse the two. So therefore, midraban, they, um, they said you can't. Uh, but um, and and what? But how could you? Uh, what, what can you do? Either you can put a lechi, or again, moving back up here, so we got uh, the bed on top is for the, is for the, uh, is for the kora, the olive is for the lechi, so as long as you put do lechi or kora, that should be able to solve your problem, because that way you'll, you'll recognize that here's the public ends, and you won't confuse carrying in a mavoy with carrying in a shatarabim, and therefore you'll not come to accidentally violate in you threw me to right there. Okay. Now we're now we're going now go, now heading back to the uh to the Mishnah or Yudo Mer in Sarek that you actually that if it's 20 out there's more than 20 that's fine. You don't need you don't need to lessen it. But Rafa Mesar Amo Yamai. And if it's but if it's more than 10 wide, you'll be Yama eight. So and Rashi says what that what is that what does it mean by Yama eight? It means you know Kanim Lamae Rokhav Kisata. Rather you'll you'll stick poles in on the sides. And that way, by, by way of love it, you'll be able to narrow down, or even else love it, or simply because of the width of the views themselves, you'll be able to um, make the entrance, then for railway less than 10 amo, then that will solve the issue of being too wide. And then the mission continues. And then, then it says that the, the mission continues that if you have a sort of petach, even if it's wider than 10 amo, you don't need, you don't need to um, make it any less because. Once you see that there's a doorway there, that's sufficient uh, recognition, um, and and that's all, and then and therefore you don't need even if it's more than ten amo, that's that that that'll work. So now moving on to the Gemara, Tanan Tanan Hatam. So we learn so we we're, we're gonna go there in Sukkah, the Gemara Sukkah. That Sukkah Shahi Gvom Lamala Mestri Mamapsula Rabbiuda Mapshir. So there it's uh, there it's talking about the maximum height of a Sukkah. So some of them say that it's 20 amot is the maximum. And Rabbi Yudah says that 20 amot or more is kush, is kasher. So my shna gabi sukha to tani tula, but gabi mavu with tani tagata. So why we have, we have different we have different um, languages between the two between the between the two? Why are why are we calling um, a a sukha puzzle, but yet by a by, by a mavu we're simply telling you how to fix it. Right? Why, why is one puzzle and one need to simply, simply needs a, a small correction? Um, Sukkah the right to Tani Tzula. Mavoi the Rabbana to Kani Tzakanta. Because Sukkah is the right. So therefore it says puzzle. Uh, whereas a Mavoi to the Rabbana, therefore it's just a Tzakanta. He by name or another answer. Uh, you could say. The uh, right to Nami Tani Tzakanta. Rather, if you direct the other can say it's a Tzakanta. Ela Sukkah the Nefishin Mile. Because in order to fix a sukkah, there's a lot of complex details. There's a lot of different parts that would need to be the right height, and it would need to be adjusted, as opposed to for the 
for for the for fixing the mavoi, we're simply moving one one beam is all you need to do, and that's not too complicated. Therefore, it says use the lashon of takanta. Amar Yehuda, Amar Rav, Chachamim lo lamdua el mipetach shel pitcho shel hecha. Right. So, the, where did the Chachamim this out from? They learned it out from the entrance to the hecha. So, Rabbi Yehuda lo lamda el mipitcho shel ula. And Rabbi Yehuda only learned it, learned it out from the path of the law. Right? So this is two different two different parts of the entrance way to the base. Gosh. Um, so the question is, which one did he learn from? So, okay. So as seen in the diagram from from the parish guy, it shows the it gives you a a looking from the side angle of looking towards what the entrance enter, entrance would look to getting into the in, into the into the mikdash. So did not. So now we're going to explain. Now we're going to go through explaining how this limud works out. So did not. So how do we know about how big the hechal and the ulam were? We learned out in the Mishnah in we know that shel hechal mama ama. That the hechal's entryway was twenty amot tall and ten amot wide. Shel ulam gavoh arba'im ama brokvo asrim ama. Um. On the other hand, the ulam is 40 amot tall and 20 amot wide. And both of them learned out that they should learn about the maximum size of a mavoi from the uh, from the either from the ulam or from the heichal based on the same process. Where it says, it says in Vayikra, you shall and you shall and you shall shaft it by the you shall slaughter it by the entrance to Al Moed. So the Rabbana think that they are two separate Kusha, whereas the um the Kikti Petakomoid, I have something. It says by what is the Petakomoid? The real the real entrance, what entryway to the Mikdash is the Hechal. The Ulam is like that's the, the real entryway is Hechal. The Ulam is, isn't really the true entrance, it's just the pre entrance. Uh, rather, Rabbana says they're going to be the same area. And therefore, um, when the Kikti uh at their value talking about both of them to see right so it's talking about both of them and that's why this is up my boat so therefore we go by the larger measurement not by the smaller measurement it's referring to both areas or you can say that maybe it also says they're two separate areas in terms of two shell Right, so what, why does he learn it? Out? It says El Petach Ulam Abayi, because uh, the Pesach says El Petach Ulam Abayi. So this is talking about Petach Ulam Abayi, so it's referring to the Ulam. And it uses the word Petach in there as well. The Rabbanan, you have a cut of El Petach Ulam Ulam. You got right, if it said towards the entrance to, to the Ulam, that would be the case. But what is it? What, what is the full, what is the full, what, what, what is the full opposition? Well, the opposition of it is, um uh is al petach ulam habayit and and what is the word habayit he does it habayit apatuach ulam means that it's the house that opens into the ulam haki and then therefore that's referring to the uh and that's referring to the hechal not to the ulam the haki tiv high mishkan tiv but wait but are, we've got a problem here. Let's take a step back. Isn't everything we're talking about, all the, the first Pasuk we're trying to learn out, isn't that based on the Mishkan? So how are we comparing the Mishkan and the base of Migdash? Because there wasn't an, like, so how are those two related? There wasn't an Hethel and an Ulam in the, in the Mishkan, only on the, on the base of Migdash. So, um, so, uh, okay, so Ashkakan, Mishkan, Dikri, Mikdash, Mikdash, Dikri, Mishkan. No, we're actually, we've found these places where they're used interchangeably. So you're right. True, it's only referring to one, but because they're used interchangeably, we can compare the the union from one to the other. The Yilu Temahafi, if you don't say that, the Amar of Yudah, Amar Shmuel, Shalom Yashachatan, Kodam Tichat Platan, Tahechal, Tzuet. Because the problem with this, notice with a different statement of Yudah, the name of Shmuel, that if you had Jephthah Shlamim by the entry, but, uh, prior to opening the doors of the Hechal, it's possible. Shanem Mar, Shaftu Petak Al Moed, Bizman Shaftufid, Velo Bizman Shanulin. Because you learned that based on, uh, based on uh, the same passage we were drashing before, Shaftu Petak Al Moed, that, they have, that the doors to the Hechal have to be open or any street that they're done inside are not kosher. But 
the Kupatsky's Darshaning is talking about the Mishkan. And there were no doors on the Mishkan. It was made up of curtains. There were no doors. Um, rather, we do find places where Mikdash is called a Mishkan. Mishkan to Mikdash. Rather, there are places where they interchangeably, and that's why you can simply call one the other and one and what Mikdash and the Mishkan and, Mik, and Mishkan the Mikdash without actually being a problem. You can learn and compare the, the dinam of one to the other. So, so Mikdash to Mishkan. So, where do we see the Mikdash being called Mishkan? If they have an Atati Mishkan, he the Tofachem. God says that he's going to place his. Mishkan amongst Ben Israel, but there he's not referring to the Mishkan. He's referring to the, in the future where Ben Israel is going to build the base of Mikdash. So therefore, the Mikdash is referred to as Mishkan. Well, the Mishkan Nikri Mikdash. When do we see the Mishkan referring to as a Mikdash? If you want to say it's based on the on that when the when the the Ben Israel of the Levim were carrying the it says don't say Mikdash carriers of the Mikdash. They came to Mishkan and then they would they would be able to set up the Mishkan before the Bnei Israel got there. So, uh, so who uh, about Aronkiv? No, we can't say that because when it said they're Mikdash, it's not referring to them carrying the base Mikdash or the or, or anything else or the Mishkan. Rather, when they say Mikdash, they're referring to the Aron, which is the Kalim of the base of the of the Mishkan, the base Mikdash. But it's definitely not referring to explicitly to the Mishkan or Mikdash or the base Mikdash itself. Rather, different basar. Basuli mikdash shalati b'tocha. God told me Israel to make for me a mikdash and I'll let it dwell amongst amongst you. But immediately prior to that, I should have commanded Israel to build the mishkan. So there, we see the mishkan is being called mikdash. Ben Rabbanan, Ben Rabbi Yehuda, Lelfun Bedach Sharach Hatzer. Wait, so fine. So you're right. So that's how we can do it. Don't say. But I've got a better question. Mara says, why don't the Rabbanan or Rabbi Yehuda learn out from the um, opening to the chatzer of the Mishkan, as it says, it's Eve, or the chatzer, me'abama, the Baruch HaChamishim, B'Chamishim, B'Koma Chamesh Amot. So when it's describing the dimensions of the Mishkan, it says it's a hundred by, it's a, it's a hundred by fifty. So, and it's five, and it's five Amot tall. So, and also it says, with Eve, so we learned that each so Malhalon Khamesh uh uh Baroka is um Baroka Vesrim, Afghan Khamesh Baroka Vesrim. Basically we learned that since there's if there's a shoulder eye, there's a side here typically in the parish eye you can see there is a on each side is fifteen, and that leaves a gap of twenty in the middle. And they look like shoulders because one is on each side when you walk in by where your shoulders are. Um, and so that would mean that, that that part of the of, of the of the Mishkan is to, is the remain the remainder would be twenty amot wide and five and five amot tall. Um. So. So just like there, it's five tall and twenty wide. Afkan chamesh berochav stream. Afkan chamesh baruch is five tall baruch of a stream in twenty twenty wide petach shara chaser ikre petach some of the petach right so the petach of the chaser is clearly referred to as a petach but anything else isn't really called a petach ibay dema or you can say it so learn differently kikdiv klaim chamesh esrayama latev begova or you can say when it says that it's fifty that it, when it says um the katev is referring to being fifteen high. Um, and but that would mean that the rest of it around is five. So basically, all circling around the, the, Mish, the Mishkan is five, except for in the front, which is 15 tall. Um, and when it says that it's five amo tall, what does that mean? Uh, so that so then like the, yeah, we look weird if part of the, 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 the gate the gate surrounding the, 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 the Mishkan is what parts really tall, parts really short. So rather, we're going to reinterpret this. By the way, what do you mean to say about when it's five tall? Um, it's really referring to the top of the Mizbeach, which was 10 amot tall, and therefore you get 15 all the way around, which looks works nice and cleanly, and it looks very nice. Rabbi Yehuda, um, and then other hand, we have Rabbi Yehuda, and Pitkul Sholom Gamar. So then, another we we go back to we mentioned before that Rabbi Yehuda learns it out from the entr entr entrance of the 
of the of the ula. So, but so that that's fine. But how that's not harachah of meser amo yimayin the law polig rebuta. But rebuta on the mission only only argues about the being too tall. It doesn't argue about it being about on on being wide. And if you really thought that it's learned out based on the ulam, it should be it should be forty. You should have a height of forty and a width of twenty. And he should have said that just like you don't need to lessen for height, you don't need to lessen for the width of ten either, because they're both still within the, within the kosher range. So Amar Baye Polig Bebrita. Rather, you see that Rebuta argues in a bright. You understand the mission? He argues elsewhere. The Tanya Baraka Meser Amar Yemayit. Rebuta Omer Enot Sarech Lemayit. So there he says, if it's ten amot wide, you should um, the Chum say you should make it less. Rebuta says you don't need to. The leaf log Mayit. It's a wide range. Rebuta argued in the Mishnah. Polig Bekova Uhadin Larafa. Because he said he talked about the height, and he assumes you'd apply the same thing to the width. Uh, and so and we and we're still saying that Rabbi Yehuda learned that from the Petal Ula. Hatanya, Mavoy, Shugva, Mestri, Mamay, Maib. Didn't we say that if it's more than 20 Amma, you should make it less? Rabbi Yehuda, Machshir, Ad Arbaim, Bukhamishim. But this bright is saying that in Mavoy uh, till 20, it's to be less. And Rabbi Yehuda said even 40 or 50 is good. Ten Berkapara, Ad Ea, even 100. So now we've got, we've got a couple of problematic shittas here. First, we have Barakapara. Based on all of Barakapara, Guzma. We understand Barakapara says 100 because he's simply saying that it's hyperbole. He's exaggerating. And that's why it's up to, it's, 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 it could be, he says 100 amo. El Rav Yehuda, my Guzma. What are we, we're talking about Rav Yehuda. What Guzma could be said? Based on all of Yehuda, Arba'im, Gurum Pizlo So we can understand our view could be saying the 40. But how does Rav Yehuda also say the 50? El Chabashim and Ale. Where does he get that from? Amar Chista, Amat Nita Atit El Rav. Rather, this this bright that actually ended up making Rav make a mistake. Tanya, what what's to that bright? So Tanya, Mavoy Shuma Shu Gavo Mestri Mama Yoter Mipikol Shalechal Yemai. If they there is a entryway that is twenty amount more than the entryway of the Hechal, I it's forty. You just make it less. Kusa or Midrabanan. And that's and based on that other bright is where um is where Ra so the, that's where Buddha Shita is that 40 is learned out from the Ula. Below we just really said rather where did Rabbi learn from how to say 40 or 50? Because he learns it out based on the way that you built uh the entry rated palaces. So entry rated palaces are 40 or 50 wide, and that's what it should be here as well. So now we're going back to the question of if we're learning from the entryway of the Hechal, according to the Rabban, um, then shouldn't we require doors? Okay, uh, Hechal. Why? Tanan, like, no, that's not true. Like, why does that be the case? Didn't we learn in the Mishnah that Tanan, Hefshir, Mavoy, Beshame, Omri, and Lechi, Bekorah, how do you fix a Mavoy? Beshame says you have to put up a side post and a Korah and a beam on the top. One or the other, either a side post or a beam on top. So then, then why? Then what do we do about the fact that the hechal had doors? Right. Rather, why are there walls on on the hechal for privacy? For privacy, people don't see it. Not because you're trying to actually mark at the end of where the hechal is. It's just there, so people don't see don't see it. So elementa. So if, if that's really the case, that's learned out according to the Chachamim from the Hechal, then how are we getting, how is Surah Petach helping us ever? Because the Ha-Hechal Surah Petach will have you. Well, didn't the Hechal have a Surah Petach? They didn't have sides and have a top? Didn't it look like an, an it wasn't it an entryway? So even if that was the case, then Tan Amot should be the maximum width of a, of, of a Surah Petach. But we said in the Mishnah that there's no limit to the width of a Rather, rather, rather so how does he explain that you can't, that you shouldn't be? You're right. I said you should. Rather from here. Rather, what is what are we really arguing about? We're actually arguing about the case of an amatra. So an amatra uh, is a beam on the top of a on, 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 as 
um, a cornice on top of the entryway. And that's what they're arguing about. They're not arguing about the actual Torah Petas, they're arguing about something else, the Amaltar. Amaltar, okay? The Hahe is Amaltar Havile. So if you look at the Esprit Mama, who is the Gavoa? And it's basically saying that that, that, that Amaltar doesn't count towards the height. Um, even because we did not, as we learned out in the, in the Mishnah and read out. So there was five cornices on top of the on top of the entrance to the Hecha. The high my Tiyuvda. This should be then this should be a refutation. Dilma ki Tanya hi del Maltraot Ulam. Tanya the high my Kushia Dilma Tavni Hecha Katavni Ulam. So maybe so the so the thing so this so this would explain how this Bechlokit works according to the Rabbanon. Because you know we know that there were uh, cornices on top of that, but how about for for Rabbi Yehuda, who's learning that from the Ulam? So we could say, well, maybe the, the Ulam also had them on top of it. Um, Alma, Amar, Rabbi Elazar, Amar, Rafa, Arba, Avopish, and Abria. So it's talking about the the how strong the core has to be, and Rav says it only has to be it has to be four brothers have to be it has to be strong. I feel like volume term mastery mama in a circle might. And if it's if you want a 20, you don't and, and it's got an almultra, you don't even need to lessen it at all. So I'm a rab, yes, it's almultra manita manita he. Uh but isn't the almultra in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a Mishnah or Brahta? Um Mantani La Amrabaya Hakam so rather um who is it? One is the Bait name, Hakama Bray the Rabba Amr Baru Tani La La the Habe Amaltra Matita the Chik Shay Larav. You shouldn't have said that and put on to Rav. Amr and what a Rav say, Amr Kharav. Now Anam Alka Matita he so there's any right. The 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 Mishnah the 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 two different uh tonight uh ten statements argue. Bilo Kashana Tana, Alamai Il Khala Mamar, Tanae, some argue with Tanaim, and that's that's okay. Did you dami me tonight? Just like just like we about Floka Tanaim regards to whether it should be 20 or 40, well, so about Loga, whether it's about Amatra as well. Rav not one by Yitzchak, Amar, below Rav, Amat Nita, Hadadi, Lo Kashan. Right, so if Yitzchak, Rav not Yitzchak says, if we didn't have Rav's statement, we could have solved it, we could have solved it differently. What we have said, that Koratam, Maim, Yishum, Ekeira, Hanitan, Yetam, and Petchol, Shalechal, Simon, and Bahama. Right, so what's the reason we um, for having a Torah? It's for something right there. And we, and since we and once we say that it's if it's taller than the potential of the entrance of the hechal, then simply it's a simon balma, and therefore that therefore it could work. From now on, it's like hanicha is lo sirle hadiraba. At least sirle hadiraba. Well, the story works well without sirle hadiraba. But you have to say the problem. What do you say? So what does Rabbi say? Dama Rabbi kidi v'lamani do dar tachem kibasir kodesh shatim at shavshati. Right, why do you sit in the in Sukkot? Um, to, so that everyone will remember that God let, let Bnei Israel, had, had Bnei Israel rest in tents, so they were in the Midbar. So, Adas Bnei Dama, Adam Yadea, Shadar, Basuka, Lamal Mesir, Mama, any Adam Yadea, Mishun Blosho, the Bain. Right, so it's in one, in the Sukkot, you have 20 Amal cap, because then in 120, people don't notice um, if something's more than 20 Amal above their heads. So maybe he also says by Sukkah, it's also a question of a care, just like by my voice for Hekar. Sukkah is also for Hekar. If we'll give a tarot to Lamali, what tarot about both? Stricha. Now you do like you need to say, you initially need to have a statement about it being the, the, the problem of being too high and both, and being because of Hekar, you need to have it mentioned both by Sukkah and by every. Diyash being a Nami Sukkah, Bahakamar, Yehuda, Kemdu the Shiva, Avidei, Shalta, Be'ena. Because you could have said if you didn't mention the 20 for both of them. It said that it's it that it's uh that for a sukkah where you sit down, people will tend to notice more the, the roof. About Mavo de Hilos um Avid Emma Modul Rabanan. But on the other hand, for um but for, for Mavo, you might say that Hecker is more of a deal because more of a big deal because you might not notice because you're simply walking on through, so you might not look up. You might have said the verse also. Because the other way around, also, like maybe you'll notice more when you're when you're walking than when you're sitting. That's why you need them both. So my amaltara. So the question is, what's the amaltara? Rokhama bray deraba barbua amar kine. So what does Rokhama bray deraba say? It's a so it looks like a bird's nest. That's what amaltara was. 
Kiyatar Ravdimi Amar, Amri Bam Raba, Paskid Arze. Right, so Ravdimi um, uh, was a Tana, was, was an Amora girl back and forth between Eretz Yisrael and Bob only said, in Eretz Yisrael, they said that it's this, this is considered, this is because what, what is a Matra? We're made up of, we're sticks made up of cedar wood. Mandamar Paskid Arza, Koshkin Kini, Mandamar Kine, about Paskid Arza low. So if you, so if the, if it's made up of cedar, of cedar wood, then even more so if it's simply made, made to look like, um, uh, look like a bird's nest. Um, but if it's so you about, about, about the birds, then look like a bird's nest, not necessarily for the, um, for the sticks of cedar wood. Um, Amanda Omar, Paskid Arze, my time up. Right, so if person is and if you say that it's, that, Paskid Arza is different. Why? Why is it the case? Mishum Dinafish Mashte. Right? Because basically, people, people see cedar beams, they, it's very noticeable. They're very fancy. People notice them more. Baha, Sukkot Dinafish Mashte. But what about the Sukkot itself? Shouldn't that also draw your eyes? Because there's, you know, the whole stuff around you, like the walls as well as the whole roof. Kavirban on the low, and they say that it wouldn't do so. Allah came on to Kakashiv, eat like Allah. Rather, it's more because the silly that's how important uh, cedar wood is or that it's got more of a cultural thing to know. Oh, the fancy the fancy cedar beams, the cedar poles. Whereas for sukkah, it's not the fancy people would necessarily say that. Okay, and that's and now we'll hopefully pick up next time from the two dots on Gimel Amad Aleph.